Hello, everybody. I have the distinct pleasure and honor to introduce our honorary guest speaker, Ms. Faustina Cooper. Ms. Cooper is a physical education instructor and Phi Theta Kappa advisor that many of us are fortunate enough to have worked with or been a student of. Faustina has been employed with JSCC for 30 years. She has been a Phi Theta Kappa advisor since 1999. She is the mother of two daughters, two sons, and has six beautiful grandchildren that she loves dearly. Faustina was diagnosed with ALS in January of this year and graciously agreed to come and speak to us all today. She's going to share some things about the ALS Association and all that it's actually done for her. So please join me in welcoming my dear friend, Faustina Cooper. Um, first of all, I just want to say thank you to each one of you, because I'm just thrilled to know that this many people came out to support me in my fight against ALS. Um, when I was diagnosed in January with ALS, and the doctor told me, I sit there for a moment and I shed my tears. Because um, I know what the end result of ALS is. Um, but I know that God is a healer. And I'm believing by faith I will be healed. So with your prayers, I can be healed. Well, but some of the things about ALS, it is a disease that destroys your motor neurons that affect your muscles. Uh, right now, the ones that they are destroying are the ones in my throat, in my neck, in my arms, and in my chest. My legs are fine, but the problem is that I don't have enough oxygen level to walk a long distance. So I use the wheelchair in order to conserve my energy. Um, I go to a clinic in Duke, uh, that's run by Dr. Richard Bidlack, and you have to meet my doctor one day. Um, he's the strangest person you've ever seen in your life. <laughs> the first time I met him, he had on this, um, I guess a cowboy outfit. He had on a yellow shirt with cowboys all over it, this crazy plaid jacket, and some um, skinny jeans with some cowboy boots. And I said, Dr. Bill Light, I got the hell with a picture of you. And his hair is standing straight up on his head. <laughs> After all of that, he's a very serious person. He takes um, ALS at heart. So when I go to the clinic, I get to see 10 people that day. I see um, the nurse, the um, um, respiratory therapist, I see the doctor. I see the occupational therapist, the physical therapist, the dietitian, the uh, speech therapist, um, a social worker, uh, ALS, um, someone from the ALS uh, association, and research. I'm also in research. They are trying to figure out how I got ALS, because it's very rare that a black female will get it. So I'm one of those rare ones. So they're trying to figure out how I got it. Um, they would say it was only two ways. The one was like uh, copper. Um, one was like copper uh, deficiency. And the other one could uh, be one of my genes mutated. And they say it takes six to nine months to determine which way I got it. So I'll find out more about that in the um, months to come. Um, also, this machine here, which is very new, it's only been out two years. Um, it's one of the machines that I say keep me living. Um, this is called a diaphragm pacer. Like someone has a heart pacer, this is a diaphragm pacer. Um, I have to wear it to um, strengthen my diaphragm, um, to keep it moving. And, um, and I start out wearing it like 30 minutes, three times a day, uh, an hour, four times a day, and now up to two hours, three times a day. And I keep on going up until I have to work 24 hours a day. 
um, that's to keep me, keep my lungs working. Because um, the final end result of ALS is that your lungs will stop working because your muscles are no longer working. So this is to keep my muscles and my lungs working for as long as possible. Um, I have about six different machines at home, including this one. Um, right now, I have a, uh, a trilogy machine that has to do with my breathing at night. I have to wear it every night. My kids have to put it on me. And, um, and I use that for breathing. I sleep real good in that. That's good. Talk about some good sleep. That's some good sleep. Um, I have the cough assist. Um, this is the machine that helps me actually cough. You have to stick it on. I hate it. You got to stick it on your face. It's like, it's hard to do that one. Um, I have a vest that you put around it that beats you to death. That's to break up the mucus in your lungs. Um, what else? I have another BPAP machine, which is like the trilogy machine, but it's a small one. Um, I also have a feeding tube now. <coughs> the feeding tube is because I can't swallow like I used to, and I don't like to choke, so I can drink, but I can't chew food and swallow. So I use the feeding tube to supplement my eating. Um, anybody want to buy some Insure? Uh, surely welcome. Appreciate it to the highest. Um, I do get Medicare now because I am uh, There's two this, um, conditions that will automatically qualify a person for um, disability and social security. One is uh, ALS and the other is being on dialysis. So you look at both of them are not too good. Like, I guess we might automatically qualify because your, um, your lifespan is not that great on either one. So you sort of like, you can't work um, being on all this stuff. Um, but um, I, I, I have learned to take each day um, special. I have a, I have a um, ministry that God has blessed me with. If I'm not here at school, I'm busy doing something else That's, that I can do. I still can text a little bit. My hands are getting to the point now that they're not great. Um, they get tired. Um, um, I don't cook. I can't dress myself. I can't even give myself a bath. If I go to the bathroom, I can't pull my pants up. So, you know, God always has my little granddaughter over there that's fine. She'd be like, oh, God, Grandma, not again. <laughs> but she helps me out. And so I paid her $5 a week for that. And she likes that. Yeah. On Saturday, she asked me, Grandma, where my $5? <laughs> and she gets to go to the store. So it's always some fun things to do. Um, um, any questions that you want to ask me about ALS? Does it hurt? No. I do not have any pain. I'm just still. That's the main thing I am, just still. I feel like, you know, my body don't want to talk to me. It's not talking to me. I mean, I actually have to look and say, body, please do something. Work this way. Um, whereas you automatically do stuff, my body don't automatically do it anymore. Um, but still, it's a blessing. And I, one time, I, I, I'm like most of you. If something happened to you, you question God, why God? Then I looked at God and I said, why not me? I'm no better than anyone else. So I said, well, you picked the right person. Because I'm, I'm going to fight it with, with, you know, with whatever I got. With, with God on my side, I can make it. And every day, and that day, he comes by. He see me sitting on the porch. I love to sit outside. And I used to sit on the porch. He blows when he goes by. Me and Christy, I know two calls me and every morning. And um, they blow, and I, I sit outside, and because most of you work all the time, you don't have time to do what I have. 
So I get to sit outside, I watch the birds, I watch the trees, I watch the grass grow, I watch everything that's going on. And you know what I say? If God can take care of all of it, surely he can take care of me. So I have not had to, I have not had to worry that much. My kids have been awesome. They have been just awesome. They take care of me. They make sure I'm in the bed at night. They just they feed me everything. Um, my brothers and my daughter, um, about two weeks ago, they remodeled my bedroom and my bathroom. Tried to make everything handicapped accessible because I've got to have a bed to do it. But I'm all right. I miss my James Blunt family. Anytime you're in the area, just stop by. And if they want to do the help, stop by. Because I really will appreciate it. You just don't know. You just don't know. But I really will appreciate it. It's, you know, I just, it's, it's, you take for granted all the little things that you do, like combing your hair, I can't do it. I get it braided up so I don't have to worry with it. Somebody said, well, go now. I said, you got to do something now. <laughs> so I just use the braid. Um, my kids are constantly calling, checking on um, Wondering what, what's going on today, Mom? How you feel? And all the people that I send texts to, they call, if I don't, if they don't get my text that day, they start worrying too. They want to know what's going on too. So I try to make sure that I reach as many people as possible. Uh, but God is good. God is good. And I know y'all wouldn't see the ice bucket challenge, because I am too. <laughs> I want to see all these people get. And that's one of the greatest things, you know, uh, they weren't raising that much money for Oh, y'all want to know about the money for ALA? I do receive um, quarterly, because, um, you know, we didn't have much funding. But quarterly, I get a $625 grant to get paid for the stuff that I need. Um, this wheelchair is given to me by ALA. Um, and it pays for my trip back and forth when I have to go to do. Um, It just pays for a lot of it. Anything that is associated with it. Um, any questions that you want to ask? I'm not afraid to answer. <laughs> so it's very, like I said, it's very rare that I had it. And also, um, they're doing a lot of the testing to make sure that my children they may uh, have uh, ALS or something like that. And my son right now, he's going through some testing, but they think he may have one of the, the, the diseases that's associated. But we don't know fully yet what he's testing. So we don't know, but thank God he's still a healer. So my faith is very strong. All my friends that call me, checking on me. All my coworkers that call me, check on me. Just keep calling me, keep checking on me. And, and all of my both uh, family and general family, thank you for all that you do. It's, um, they sent me, um, both sent me a big flower that I um, have to water. But thank God I got my little man right there. The water is my flower. That's the water that's out of my baby. He loves the water that flower. And my um, my rocking chair, the kids love the rock. I'm not a rocking chair fan, but my grandbaby loves He loves the rock. So. Anything else that anybody want to ask? If not, let's get to the real business. <laughs> Well, actually, we have one more addition to our program. We have a very special recognition at this time, and Dr. Rouse will come forward and present the recognition. Certainly, um, one of the things I want to say to you, and 
as we assemble as a family here today to recognize Foster Cooper and to support her fight with ALS. And I know that they deem the Faustina's fighters. Fighters fight, they always have a yell that they do to encourage them. And today, those of you know what I'm going to say. Go Spartans! That's right. Again, we're talking about Faustina here. Go Spartans! Let's try it one more time. Go Spartans! There you go. Faustina, you have several fighters here. We know that you're a fighter, and we're joining you in this fight against ALS. A uh, few uh, days ago, I got this correspondence from Phi Theta Kappa, and they had a little black box with it, and I opened the box up, and there was this nice pin in there. I said, oh, that's going to be nice on my jacket. You know, I can wear this around campus and look real spiffy. Then I read the letter a little bit more. It said, this is for Faustina Cooper for serving 15 years as an advisor for Phi Theta Kappa. Let's give her a hand, please. So today, we want to recognize you as the National Office has recognized you for 15 years of dedicated service to Phi Theta Kappa, and I must tell you that Faustina has really been a fighter for all of her students. They come out on field trips, making sure that you're a five-star chapter, which doesn't happen very often. Everywhere I go that they know about Phi Theta Kappa here at James Sprunt, as you're from that college, it always has those students who win all the competitions. And I will say that it's because the advisors like Faustina and others who've helped our students to really be great at what they do. So Faustina, this is your pen, and we want you to wear it very proudly for the national office. We also have for you a plaque that we want you to display, and I'm going to ask your granddaughter if she'll come forward. And she'll accept this plaque for you. <laughs> Not in front of all these Okay, your son's going to come. Um, this plaque says, James Front Community College Certificate of Appreciation presented to Faustina Cooper in recognition, in recognition of your 15 years of dedication and service as advisor of the Beta Epsilon Chi chapter of Phi Theta Kappa. Dated this 24th day of September 2014 and is signed by Ms. June Davis, Vice President of Curriculum Service, and myself, Lawrence L. Rouse, President of James Front Community College, we present this to you in love, Faustina. And as Faustina said, we're on to the next event, which is when they approached me and said, well, will you come out and take the ice bucket challenge? And I said, well, for Faustina Cooper, I will. And so you will see me be doused with ice water today with Faustina. <laughs> and I know she'll have some fun with that. But thank you for being here. And we'll go back to the program. And I think someone else. Oh, we're going to go out to the. OK. I was hoping I could delay it a little bit. But we're going to go out and start the Ice Bucket Challenge. So please join us out there. And again, go. Thank you.